My name's Jo. Um, my family have been affected by meningitis. Our son Theo fell ill um, when he was four months old. My name's Melinda and we were affected by meningitis when my daughter Amelia contracted it at 10 months old. My name is Christine Etheridge. I'm an ambassador for Meningitis Research Foundation and really because my son Ben who had meningitis, he's now 20 and at university but he was three and a half when we discovered that he had meningococcal septicemia. Theo's continued to develop and that is the best thing that's happened. He's 17 now, he's a wheelchair user, he has cochlear implants his age is learning about age is about 18 months to two years um, but he understands a lot and he continues to progress it's just it's what they call developmental delay Amelia has a lot of after effects um, the main ones being she has lost her thumb and fingers on her right hand she was right hand dominant so that's been a bit tricky for her um, she has lost a portion of the palm she's got heavy scarring on her, that arm as well as both of her legs because she had compartment syndrome. She now has epilepsy uh, due to 25% of her brain becoming scar tissue from the disease. Um, she's had dental issues as well. Um, when she was younger in year two, she needed to have all her teeth pulled um, and they've still not regrown back properly because of the damage that was caused. There are consequences from having meningitis, meningitis B when he was little. Um, lots of, um, apart from operations to lengthen legs, he has Raynaud's tinnitus, um, which have been caused by certain drugs as well that he had to take. His older brother was three when he was ill, so he went through the trauma with the family. And as a result, he has, he does suffer with quite a lot of anxiety. Um, and so supporting him, we, we, we pretty much killed ourselves to support him as much as, as Theo. With Amelia's younger sister, Sophie, um, there's many things we need to be quite aware of, especially because Amelia takes so much of her time. Um, she can get quite jealous and think things aren't fair. Um, one thing that has helped is since we've moved, she has been able to access young carers. Um, I never knew she was classed as a carer until we moved here and we were speaking to a disability social worker and they actually recommended Sophie going forward to it because she was struggling with the it's not fair why does Amelia get this why does Amelia get that he's given me post-traumatic stress disorder um which in the last year I've only just realized I've got I get it when I'm watching television it could be anything um especially connected to children it just sets me off bawling um it, it's it's not the sympathy or the empathy that does that it's this feeling of Help, almost slight helplessness. Even now, 17 years later, any trip to a hospital with myself or any child, um, it, it, you know, my anxiety goes through the roof. But on the whole, it's just, it's general anxiety. I've, I've noticed that I'm a lot, I'm anxious a lot more than, than my friends who don't have special children. When she first came out of hospital, I was diagnosed with PTSD. It took about a year and a half for the diagnosis. Both myself and my husband, we've had a lot of counselling and we still do. We still have a counsellor now um, that we go to whenever we need to. And I can't recommend that highly enough. My husband at the time, um, he was the same, but he started to write a blog, which was really helpful for him because people were constantly messaging us and that was really wearing and tiring having to reply to everybody's messages but wanting to keep everybody in the loop so he started to sort of write a blog and then email everybody there's no such thing as whatsapp then so we couldn't have a whatsapp group the thing that's helped me most is other parents meeting uh talking to each other and saying you know where did you get that from and how did you access this um that's been really helpful my advice would definitely be if they feel able to, to talk to other parents um, that have been through it. They're the most knowledgeable and they've been through it. They know what sort of is helpful, isn't helpful. Um, and to not stop fighting to get the child the care they do need. Actually, one of the consultants said to us in the hospital, if anyone offers you help, take it. And we looked at him and went, OK, because we didn't really know what he meant. But actually he was absolutely right you know you need to take all the help you can get if anyone offers you any help at all just say yes please 
don't don't be proud don't you know don't think no I can do this we don't need help we just take all the help you can get because there's precious little of it to be honest there's not going to be many people that are offering you help without you having to fight for it I do remember feeling about the long-term consequences of Ben I, I do remember thinking, how is it going to affect him when he's older? How is he going to cope as a teenager? He's going to not grow or he's not going to um, have a body that functions normally like other people. And I spent so many years worrying about those things that now when I look back with hindsight, I just wish I'd taken it day by day. The, I think the cliche is uh, if uh, an empty battery can't power anything. So if your batteries are are run down completely, you can't give to your child. So you have to look after yourself and you have to take every opportunity and every offer to look after yourself and rest. The MRF have been brilliant. They've supported me mainly because of being able to talk about it in a, a normal way. It's helped me to actually talk about my experiences, which then in turn help other people. Amelia was about three or four. I want to say that's when we went to the first pushing the boundaries um and that was really nice for her just to see like she wasn't alone um there was a lot of support there we got to meet doctors and lots of other families that have been through the same thing initially they were the voice at the end of the phone telling me yes other people have been through this you're not alone having that one person that I knew I could ring and talk to who would who who knew what I'd been through and um could not only give me some practical advice but just just be moral support really